Brooklyn Independent Television. If every one of us experienced fever at one point or another, a surprisingly high percentage of us also end up dealing with some sort of back pain. Help can come in a bewildering range of options, from over-the-counter pain relief to on-the-operating-table surgical procedures and everything in between. In Borough Park, we visit the Brooklyn Spine Center, where we'll meet a man who had reached the point where he could no longer walk. Health Beat Sherry Carabin tells us how the center decided to treat his condition and how he's doing now. My wife and I were at a wedding. Walking from the wedding to the car, I said to my wife, something's wrong with my back. I don't know, something's not right. Went to sleep, it's the middle of the night to get up. Couldn't walk. I can't explain the pain, but when you can't walk because something telling you can't walk, it's bad. That was about six years ago. It was the start of 62-year-old Avi Weiss's long battle with a disabling back condition. The next morning, I called my internist. He drugged me up with pain medication just so I can get around. At the same time, I had this terrible, excruciating pain in my right thigh. And once in a while, I would fall in the street. Eventually, the Midwood resident went for an MRI, and the results were not good. The MRI revealed I had, uh, besides bulging discs, had a loose fragment. It was sitting on my nerve, and that was the pain shooting there. The recommendation? Surgery. But then Weiss says his wife read about a non-surgical alternative known as spinal decompression. He decided to give it a try and contacted Dr. Melinda Keller at the Brooklyn Spine Center in Borough Park to find out if he was a candidate. As Dr. Keller explains, herniated discs are one of the most common problems that she treats. The disc is the cushion between the bones and should be in place. As you see, this red one here is coming out. If you look on the side, it's actually more out of place, which we'll call a herniation. This herniated disc can hit a nerve. The herniated disc can go into your spinal cord. The nerve, which is the sciatic nerve, will go down your leg. And oftentimes, patients don't only present okay. with low back pain, but patients will present with low back pain radiating into one of their lower extremities, too. The diagnosis is usually made after a person has had an MRI. That's what a herniated disc looks like. This is the goal. The conventional treatment for herniated disc is either steroid injection or surgery. And people are seeking an alternative. People want natural, people want non-invasive. Uh, spinal decompression is, is, is successful. Not everyone is a candidate. Who is not a good candidate for spinal decompression? Once someone has had surgery, they're not a candidate for us any longer. Once somebody has had hardware put into their spine, metal put into their spine, if somebody has any kind of cancer in their spine, they wouldn't be a candidate. A recent fracture somebody with a comorbidity, which means a, a diagnosis of something else in their body, of, of complicating factors. Before making the determination, patients must undergo a thorough examination that includes a case history, MRI review, and x-rays. In some cases, Keller speaks with the doctors who are already treating the patient. How does spinal decompression work? This thing really helped me. We have a computerized table. The table is programmed to the MRI, to the patient. The table aims exactly at the disc, and its goal is to take pressure off the disc, to create a state of zero gravity on this pressurized disc, and then create a negative pressure, a suction, to bring this herniated material back into place. I'm in a laying position here. This is gently tugging on me, kind of pulling my vertebrae apart, and having things go back where they should go. And while I'm here, it's, it's, I get a headphone, I watch whatever show I want to watch. Program runs about 20, 25 minutes each, uh, um, each treatment. And after that, uh, they put some ice on your back, another 10 to 15 minutes. And it's, 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 it works. However, a special report put together by researchers from Duke University Medical School, the Mayo Clinic, and Johns Hopkins University School of Medicine was not quite as enthusiastic about the procedure. 
The report appeared in Anesthesiology News in December of 2007. It concluded that while some studies did show a reduction in low back pain in patients who underwent non-surgical spinal decompression, further investigation is needed to determine if it provides greater benefit than other treatments. What's the average number of treatments that a patient needs to have before they see results? We have had patients feel results after one visit, after two visits, after three visits, and we've had patients that feel results after a dozen and a half or two dozen visits. Decompression is not 100%. The results are not 100%. Out of 10 patients starting decompression, we expect nine of them to have terrific results. In Weiss's case, relief came relatively quickly. After three or four or five, you saw the progress. After 10 or 15, I was like really almost off every medication. Spinal decompression can also be used to treat other painful conditions, including degenerative disc disease. On the model, it would look like this versus a healthy disc, a normal disc. On an x-ray, a degenerated disc in this neck or cervical spine can clearly see that between two and three, there's no disc space. This patient was 72 years old, went through a program of non-surgical spinal decompression. This is his post x-ray where between two and three it has opened up. Bend your knees for me. Pluses of decompression. It's natural. It's comfortable. It's lasting. We have patients that are now in their seventh, eighth year after decompression and they're still experiencing much improved spinal health. As for Weiss, he's made his decision. By once a year I get the treatment the, the machine. Every five, six, seven weeks I come up for basic adjustments. I went back to do all my sports. No medications. It, it, it's, it's, it's a miracle. Okay, thank you very much. My pleasure. This is Sherry Carabin reporting for Health Beat Brooklyn. Watch this and other Brooklyn Independent Television episodes online at brickartsmedia.org/bit.